want to show you next is a vase. Vase forms, of course, can be big or small. I'm just going to do, this is about a two pound one. Everything about a vase form is going to look somewhat similar to the cylinder as far as uh, opening because it will have a flat bottom and a corner on the inside. I am not going to leave any clay at the base for trimming. Typically with a vase, I just make sure it's clean on the day that I throw it and I don't trim it. Vases are pretty tough as it is to flip upside down and trim, so that's why I just have it the way I need it to be on the day I throw it. Alright, so I'm making this just a little bit thinner than what I did before, closer to a quarter of an inch instead of a half, because again, I'm not going to trim. thing about a vase is you have to keep it narrow, unlike a bowl, which gets wider, a vase has to stay narrow because if you get it wide, it's very difficult to bring it back without um, really stretching the clay and causing little weird stress marks and such. Almost done thinning it, and then I'll be ready to start shaping in a minute. All right, thin out the bottom of the wall here. Okay, so what I want to do next is I want to go ahead and shape the bottom part of this base. The top part will be shaped after the bottom because it's going to be too narrow to get my hand in to shape the bottom once I do the top. So I have to get the bottom the way I want it first. I'm going to get my puddle out of there. Okay, so what I'm doing right here is I'm just kind of thinning the base of that wall and giving it kind of a nice round belly. Okay, and then once I kind of have the belly the way I want it, I'm going to bring this in a little bit. Once you collar it slightly, then you have to do a compression pull. If you kept collaring it too much at one time, you'll get a bunch of diagonal stress marks which I have a few right here, but I think it's because I have a bubble that was trapped. This clay is pretty soft clay, so you just have to watch if it's really soft. That means it can change really quickly or perhaps it could slump more so. The only reason it's this soft is because I was recycling trimmings. So, you can see, since I brought in this top, it really kind of got out of whack, so I have to just trim that off. And 
you know, you can bring it in quite far. It makes it a little less functional and a little more decorative. But you can do it, you know, to suit whatever design you had in mind. All right, I'm going to trim this just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take this wooden knife and trim away a little bit more at the base so it kind of cuts it in a little bit. It'll make it a little bit smoother, a little bit less dumpy. I like for it to kind of come back in because if it's got kind of a fat bottom, it tends to have a chubby, dumpy appearance. Not that there's anything wrong with chubby, but... We just don't want dumpy pots. Okay. Now there is one final thing that I want to show you on this. I mean, this could be done as it is. You could take it and you could, you know, modify it if you want to. But I want to show you one last thing, which is really kind of fun. And my students are always amazed by this, so I just want to show it in video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put my lips right on the rim, I'm going to seal and I'm going to blow in it and uh, you want to watch the sides when I do it because it should expand the sides out and make them kind of balloon out a little bit. Of course I have my towel handy so I can wipe my mouth off. So here we go. And I did it just a little too far as you can see because I cut or I, I blew through. Now, in this case, if, if I wanted to keep this one, I would let it get leather hard and then do some piercings and cutting and, and cut through. But I, I wasn't quite cautious enough, as you can tell, and I just went a little crazy. But that's how you blow up a, a vase, which is really quite fun. And I will leave this on the bat.